Hey everyone, ah, uh, it's your boy, Keynote, and I'm back at it again with a new episode of the Sound Ideas podcast.、Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome aboard.、Uh, this is a series where I talk about the music of the Kingdom Hearts series.、Um, usually, I invite other guests to discuss with、uh, so that they can talk about、uh, their own experiences with the soundtrack, their opinions of certain tracks,、uh, compare them. Uh, talking about different composers and people involved with the music. And this should be the seventh or eighth episode of the series so far.、Uh, and this one is going to be a little different because, as you can see, I am talking to myself.、Uh, and usually by this point, I'm already introduced the person that I'm going to be talking to、uh, uh, for the rest of the episode.、Uh, but for this one, I kind of wanted to just do kind of an unplanned, unscripted sort of thing. Where I talk about certain things that have been going on uh, musically uh, that I think are overall relevant to the future of the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack. And I'll get into it in just a little bit.、Uh, but before I do, I just want to remind you guys that、uh, this is my second channel. I have a main channel called Keynote. If you look it up on the search bar, you will find it. And、uh, I have been putting out a lot of, well, not a lot, but Now and then, I post some new music th things that I've been working on.、Uh, soon, I'm going to be posting two music projects that I've been working on that I think are very, very above the bar for what I usually do. And I think I'm going to talk about one of those a little more during this episode as well.、Uh, maybe if I, if I go a little in depth about my future projects and, and things that I've been working on.、Uh, but I will get into that later. First things first. The new The World Ends With You, the game came out just the other day. And I've been playing it, I've been enjoying it, I haven't finished it yet, so don't give me any spoilers. So anyone who ha like, follows Kingdom Hearts music and Square Enix like, closely、uh, will probably be familiar th with the composer for The World Ends With You,、uh, Takeharu Ishimoto, and he is someone that I often talk about in this channel. It's kind of a running joke to clown on this guy. which <laughs> I do think sometimes it co comes off as a little unwarranted and like a little bit too much.、Uh, but I definitely want to talk about why this happens and why I have such strong opinions about Ishimoto. They're not as strong as they might look. I definitely overplay my feelings about this guy for the sake of comedy because I think it's fucking hilarious. Neo the World Ends With You, the game came out, the soundtrack is fine.、Uh, there are issues with it, and I think I'll probably talk about them、uh, in a little bit. But like, it works for the game. You know, you're playing through the game, the songs are playing, like, everything is catchy, for sure. Like, most of the songs that play in that game will be stuck in your head because they play super often. And the game is、uh, structured in a way that the music that plays in that game plays so in a very random way.、Uh, anytime you open the menu,、uh, it plays one established track, right? But I think that's the only like, point in the game, besides maybe a few cutscenes, where the music that plays is predetermined. Because every time you close the menu, a completely random song that is available in the soundtrack at that point will play, right? And I think new ones start getting introduced as you progress in the game. But mostly you will be hearing the same things over and over, and they always switch every time you switch an area, enter and leave a battle, anything. A lot of this game is you listening to the first 10, 20 seconds of a track, going to the next area, or entering a battle, or doing anything really, and suddenly you're listening to the first 20 seconds of another track. And rinse and repeat. Like, that's kind of the process, the experience of playing、uh, Neo The World Ends With You. And much like the first The World Ends With You game, this was composed by Takaharu Ishimoto. And he gets a lot of praise for the first The World Ends With You soundtrack. I'm seeing a lot of praise for the soundtrack of this game. Good for him. Be because clearly he's doing something right if people are enjoying the soundtrack. But I do think that there are some issues. That are worth talking about because Takaharu Ishimoto is also a composer for the Kingdom Hearts series, and he, his role is getting progressively more and more important to the point where he had the honor of composing or arranging the final boss theme for Kingdom Hearts 3,、uh, which is arguably one of the most important tracks of that game. It closes off that first saga. A lot of people were disappointed with the overall quality of that track, especially compared to some of the tracks that play in the part right before that in the game. 
which were arranged by a variety of people. Many people think that Yoko did most of those tracks, and she did compose the like the tracks that they are based on. Most of them were arranged by other people who weren't Yoko Shimomura. But even so, Ishimoto's it feels like he really dropped the ball for those few tracks. And again, this is an opinion, and many people also disagree and think that those tracks are fine. That Dark Domination is great. That Replicas is great. It's fine. It's it's epic. But here's my opinion. You know, I think that those tracks are based off, and they're they're basically just stitching together the old themes from Yoko. But if you want to have a good experience listening to those tracks, you would just listen to the original. Why would you listen to a version of the study that sounds inferior to? the orchestra versions that we already have, and so on. Especially if they don't bring anything new to the orchestration, to the arrangement, which they really don't. It's it's They're all kind of simplified versions, and even the part of Rage Awakened that plays in Dark Domination is kind of just like literally the, the MIDI files, like the sound files from Kingdom Hearts 2 copied into KH3, because you, you can literally hear like every single little detail, not every single one, but a lot of the details that were in the original track, step by step just copied pasted with a sound font that feels honestly kind of worse than the original. But again, this is an opinion, um, you can disagree, and it's fine. A lot of people, I feel like, have been getting annoyed with me on Twitter for dunking on Ishimoto so much, which I find is weird because I don't really do it that often, especially not on Twitter. I, de I definitely do it a lot with my friends in private, uh, but on Twitter, I made maybe a couple of posts ever since the world, the new The World Ends With You game came out. Just it, not even like super dunking on him, just kind of like questioning some stuff that happened. Let's get into what happened. So me and my friends were listening to the entire the world, the entire soundtrack of this new game, right, uh, on YouTube, and just like kind of evaluating it a lot. And we were pretty surprised that uh, many of the tracks, or not many, but like three or four maybe, like sound really good. Like they're they're completely enjoyable to the end. Uh, Hustle Bustle is one I can think of. The one uh, when you fight the pig noise is great. I think that one is amazing and it's also super long. Here's the thing. Uh, as great as those tracks are, I feel like, and, and this is something that I can't really prove, but that my friends definitely agree with me. It doesn't sound like Ishimoto was the person who did a lot of those. Or at the very least, it sounds like they were heavily sampled from other tracks that are like from exterior sources. Yeah. So one of the things that happened on Twitter is that when we were looking at the World Ends With You soundtrack, one of my friends scrolled down into the description and he noticed that uh, YouTube's song detecting algorithm for copyright uh, video of the The World Ends With You soundtrack for something else. And we were like, huh, that's weird. Like, why would YouTube claim as if like there were a song that didn't belong to that soundtrack in that video. So we checked it out and it turns out that one of the songs from the game uh, that I can't remember what it's called right now, uh, no, uh, it's Act the Fool, it's called Act the Fool from New The World Ends With You, is pretty much a one-to-one -one just copy of a song from a like an audio library of free license, no, not not free, you, you, ha you do have to buy the license for the song to use it, but it's, it's licensed music, right? <laughs> Supposedly, Ishimoto bought the license for this, like he has the rights to use it, blah blah blah, that like legally this is fine, you know? But there is something to say when a lot, someone is going to be listening to the soundtrack and thinking, wow, Ishimoto is a great composer. And there's a huge chance that what they're listening to wasn't composed by Ishimoto, it was sampled by him. So for this song in particular, um, it is it has two parts of it. It has an A and a B section, from what I remember. And the A section is literally just this uh, sampled thing from Wild West Music, it's, it seems to be called. Uh, can't find, I, I can't find anything really about these guys on the internet, uh, but it is something that exists and that Ishimoto borrowed from. Uh, and the thing is, usually well, and I'm not a master on sampling or sampled music, but from what I understand, 
understand usually when something is sampled uh, it's in a very transformative way it's a very short elements of a track that are borrowed you know and transformed there there are changes very significant changes to this track that make it their own. Uh, it's just kind of understood to be done that way. But for this one, it is like the, the, the entire A part of that song is just this other song, slightly sped up, which roughs me in a weird way because Ishimoto clearly knows how to do things that aren't this lazy but it's really lazy like like th that's the only way I can put it like that's lazy he could have done a way better job at making this a little bit more transformative adding some some sense or whatever in the background I don't care and even then like when Ishimoto adds synths and stuff to his songs it's usually like very simple long notes uh, chord progression and melodic progression are usually very predictable uh, usually Usually everything is in the same two keys, A minor and E minor. So like it, it's not, I don't know, it's a little surprising though that this happened because uh, we've known that Ishimoto uses samples a lot. In his first The World Ends With You soundtrack, there are several guitar samples that are borrowed, uh, other instruments as well. Like, like it, it's fine, sampling is a completely fine thing. The fact that we couldn't really find where those samples were from means that they, um, well we can, but we didn't. Uh, the thing is, it they were more transformative than, uh, which was weird. Uh, so I posted about this on Twitter, about this song, and I was kind of like overly exaggerating, saying like, wow, this is plagiarized. Uh, a few minutes later, I clarified that I know that this was, that it's not literally plagiarized. Uh, but it's just funny how little it was modified, like how little effort were, went into, like not hiding, but you know, covering. Well, you don't have to hide that you're sampling something, but I don't know, you guys know what I'm saying, right? Like, it's so in your face the same thing if, if you find the original. So what's Ishimoto's effort here? He he made a B section for the song, uh, cool, I guess? Like, but it's still not gonna stop rubbing me the wrong way. Uh, so I posted about this on Twitter, as I said. Uh, got some people kind of pissed off at me <laughs> for bringing this up, uh, which like, okay, fine, L like, it's completely fine and legal that he did this, but I'm allowed to criticize it on my twitter.com because it's lazy, it is lazy, like, come on, come on, and I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say that it's lazy. So a few days pass, uh, hanging out with my friend again on Discord, he points out that I found another sample from Ishimoto's, uh, from one of Ishimoto's songs. This one is called The Beginning of a Happy Life, it's the name of the song in the the world ends with you, right? So he found out that there's like a entire vocal and guitar part around the middle of the song around a minute in that is also, again, it's literally just a sped up version of a track from that the swimming anime. You know the swimming anime free with an exclamation point? Yeah, the song from that soundtrack is called Aggressive Roo and it's this guy going like, gotta bring it on, bring it on. Bring it on, bring it on. Again, like it's much slower and the original, he speeds it up. And this track is a lot more transformative in The World Ends With You, the beginning of A Happy Life, I mean. It, it has a lot of stuff that seems to be its own, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this were a track that is just a bunch of other samples stitched together, which again, is fine. Sampling, composing, and arranging, well, I'm not sure if you can call it an arrangement, but sampling is a completely valid way of making music. I just think it's a misleading way to think of him as a composer when that's not not like I guess, I guess if you if you were to think of it, he's more like a remixer. At least when it comes to these tracks, I think like when it comes to Cage Three stuff, there he was definitely more of a composer. When it came to his pirates uh, music, the Central Tokyo music, like clearly that was composed by him, and you can tell because when he composes things, that's when the patterns become predictable. That's when the melodies become more familiar. The sound fonts that he uses, the VSTs, are always like very uh, noticeable. Be 
that's kind of like a trademark of his style. Like you will recognize if something was composed by Ishimoto if you pay attention to it, because there are so many patterns that they follow, and that it's kind of impossible not to notice it, right? Uh, so I guess where I'm going with this is that like I don't think Ishimoto is an awful composer. I mean, who am I kidding? Yeah, he is. <laughs> But like, still, I don't think there's anything wrong with liking his music. I just don't think that he is the one that you should be giving all the credit to when it comes to stuff like this. Y you should give him the credit for stitching it together. The music sounds good in the end, so that that is his merit, right? He is the one who put it together. It's perfectly fine to say like, yeah, Ishimoto did a good job with this. But I also think it's important for us to understand the music that we are consuming so that we can really say like what we like about it, what we don't like about it, uh, why we think it's good or not. And like, again, if you don't care about this kind of stuff, more power to you. You can enjoy this game's soundtrack. You can enjoy this guy's work. Perfect. Don't let me stop you. But also, I don't take it as an attack on your personal tastes if I am criticizing that music. Again, you are completely allowed to enjoy it. I'm just saying that there are things to talk to talk about, there are things to notice and discuss. Why shouldn't we? Criticism, I think, is such a, a misunderstood thing because often it's understood as an attack. If I'm gonna be completely honest, the whole point of me talking about Ishimoto, Ishimoto this, Ishimoto that. Like, no one cares, right? I'm, I'm sure absolutely none of you care. And I'm the only person talking about this. But it's interesting. I think it's interesting and it's it's worth speculating on and discussing and, and thinking like, where is he gonna go from here? Which is why I was so excited to listen to this new soundtrack of Neo The World Ends With You. And I'm not done looking into it because there are quite a few things that I think are unanswered. Make some sort of list of songs that I know were clearly composed by him or have compositional elements that were added by him. And I'm gonna make a list of songs that I feel like do not have this direct hand from Ishimoto in them. Obviously, since he kind of is the director for the soundtrack, I'm pretty sure he was involved in some way or another with most of them, if not all of them. Uh, but there are songs like, I think it's called Hustle Bustle. There's a song that sounds like it's straight out of Death Punk, and it has a bunch of compositional elements that are so unlike anything that Ishimoto does, like, that it's kind of like, that you can think that it was him that did it. All the evidence kind of leads to it being someone else. Uh, it, it really does sound like it's something straight out of Daft Punk, like the scents are so high quality, there's like grace notes, there's like panning on the audio, like it's crazy, it's crazy. And, and there's a few other tracks that do stuff like this as well. That's either sampled from someone else or someone else helped him do it, is what I think. Because when he makes music by himself, I think he is limited by what he knows how to do. I, th I think he has great ideas, I just don't think he knows how to put them on paper at times. That's kind of it, I think, for the Ishimoto talk today. Again, like, I don't want to be taken as this guy that's hating for the sake of a hating, you know? Which I can, t I know I can totally come across as that, especially when it comes to this dude, but I just kind of want to, I'm, I'm just so intrigued by, by Ishimoto as a composer, you know? And, and I want to know, I want to see where all of this go. I think it's super interesting that like everything is happening the way that it is happening. And I am also interested in seeing if or how Ishimoto's role in the Kingdom Hearts series is gonna be coming from the coming from Cage 3 onward. Because he didn't return for Remind, maybe because he was working on the soundtrack for this new game. I I wanna know if he is going to have the same sort of involvement in the soundtrack as he did in Kingdom Hearts 3, you know? in how his style is gonna develop, where Nomura is gonna put him in, like what he's gonna what is he gonna compose for, you know? I don't know, it's a little scary. It's a little scary because I uh, Honestly, I was not super happy with some of the tracks that he did for Cage 3. But I also think that I am a little bit too hard on him and too biased because of how much I hate Dark Domination. Because really, that's, that's the only actually offensive. I think that the San Francisco music is... Like, the Pirates music is... It's, it's cool, you know, like... But I also think that a lot of this is just that... It's so much better than Dark Domination that I'm going, <laughs> that I'm gonna look at it and be like, yeah, this is fine, you know, because the, the bar was just so low for that. Gosh, I was going to make a big scripted video about this guy, like, like super detailed research. I have like around 20 pages written of that, uh, but it's also kind of just a mess. 
the thing is, I don't think I can make sense of it, you know? The, the point is, like, where, where am I going with that? Like, the, the thing is, I was gonna call the, the video, like, the Ishimoto issue or something, which I think is a very catchy title, but anyway, like, where am I going with it? Like, what is the solution that I'm searching for? And I, I don't think I know it. I, I, it. It was mostly just me kind of trying to observe, seeing where things go wrong, seeing, like, why, like, why certain songs sound so familiar to each other when it comes to Ishimoto. But I don't think I managed to go as in-depth as I wanted to because there's just a little, like, it's a little just too much for me, you know? Which is fine. Uh, I, I understand that, like, I'm not gonna have the answers for everything that I want immediately. Part two of this episode is gonna be talking about something that's not Ishimoto because I'm sure everyone is tired of me talking about it. I'm not done. I'm gonna come back to this. You just wait. But for now, let's talk about something else. So one of the projects that I am working on, and uh, I've posted like a little preview of it on my Twitter page, on uh, Glass Ostinato, and it's a recreation of one of the tracks from the Kingdom Hearts World Tour concert that happened all around the world. Uh, I think it, I think it was 2018 and I think 2017 as well. And the thing is when that concert was happening and uh, they also sold little CDs with most of the tracks from the concerts so you could listen to them again and you can find that on the internet uh, on YouTube like many people have posted it and thing is it's missing a few tracks namely it's missing Organization 13 and there are no recordings of it I mean there are there is like one recording of it on YouTube it's pretty low quality but there's also another track that is Twilight Town and At Dusk I Will Think of You. And the Lazy Afternoons arrangement uh, is actually very, very similar to the one from the First Breath concert. Uh, if you don't know, First Breath was a concert that happened uh, maybe one or two years before the World Tour concert. It had like a gimmick to it that it only focused on brass and uh, woodwind instruments. So. Yeah, there were a few tracks that had like harp, piano, uh, but no strings. So yeah, that those that, that's a song that is also not in the CD. So like I found uh, recordings of both of these, and I started thinking about a project of restoring lost Kingdom Hearts music media. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I transcribed the entire Organization 13 arrangement. And I am and I, I am currently producing it. I got a bunch of musicians to play the instruments for me. Uh, I'm playing the flute for it, and I'm going to try to recreate it, mix it, and release it online, so that people can listen to what the arrangement sounded like in a higher quality than what is currently available. Especially since it's such a hard, uh, su such hard footage to even find. That's one thing. I also want to do the same thing for the Twilight Town arrangement, because why not? Uh, and it's hard to make you think about other parts media music that has been lost. And I think what I'm going to try to do in the I don't know, following months to focus on this project where I am restoring lost Kingdom Hearts media. So I'm going to probably in the future be making a video about some of these, uh, just like a, a quick low effort thing again, so that I can just talk about these things, let people know that they exist, maybe point them to where to find them. I'll give one example, there is a track from that first Breath concert, played like at the very end of the concert that, called the End Car, and it's a different version of Dearly Beloved that sounds like a big band arrangement, it's like jazz, and it's super similar to what we ended up getting in Melody of Memory, but it also has a bunch of different differences. So like that's super cool and it's also like not available, it's not official anywhere. 
and the only way you can listen to it is in a very low quality sound SoundCloud recording that someone thankfully made and posted online. If it weren't for that, that arrangement would be lost forever. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be trying to restore all of these tracks to a more uh, listenable state. Uh, and hopefully, like, I, I'm not really getting anything out of this. Like, I'm not getting any money out of this. I'm not get, getting many followers or views out of this, probably. Uh, but I just want to have fun with it, and I also think it's just important for our preservation. Kind of related to this is that uh, recently I found the entire original coded soundtrack on nicovideo.com or .jp, and it, it had been posted since maybe 2008 or something, it, or I, I think it was 2010, but no one had found it. Like it was just there, and no one found it ever. Uh, it, it was kind of just lost to time, and I managed to find it, I, I gave it to KH Waterblock, I extracted the, the whole thing, he separated them into different things, and now we have the coded soundtrack available for everyone to listen to. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can go to KH Waterblock's uh, Twitter, I think he, he should have it available somewhere there as a post. And I'm sure there's many more things, there, there are a few other things that I haven't talked about yet in this video because I want to save them for... Uh, whatever I end up doing in the future. These things, despite their rarity, can still be preserved to a certain extent. So I'm gonna do everything that I can to make it sound great. The Organization 13 arrangement is almost done. I wanna post it by the end of August, so the, by the end of this month. And great, I'm doing like some fancy video editing for it. Like, it's, it's gonna be awesome. So I cannot wait to get that out. Uh, if you wanna see it, don't forget to subscribe to my main channel, Keynote, right up here. It's him, it's me. The boy. Uh, and if you want to watch more of the Sound Ideas podcast, uh, this was a very different episode again. It's, it was kind of me just rambling. I didn't really plan this out. Uh, but if you liked what you heard, uh, or if you didn't like what I heard and want to get angry at me and send me hate comments and soft block me on Twitter, then make sure to subscribe to this little fellow over here, Glass Asunato. Make sure to check out my Twitter for Sound Ideas as well. It's up here. It's club. Glass Asinato, the Twitter. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you if you tuned into it. I know this one was kind of weird. Really just me rambling, but like, what else is sound idea? But if not me rambling, and also listening to other people ramble. Uh, but, yeah. That's it. And, oh, one more thing before I leave. Uh, as you guys, well, I, I don't think anyone knows this, but I am, I don't have a job, right? I don't get any money from YouTube because I, I get very few views on my main channel and I don't put content out that regularly either. Uh, and I also, am, I, this channel right here is not monetized because Again, I, I don't put content frequently enough, I don't have enough subscribers, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty small right now, which is completely fine. But if you do want to support me uh, in any sort of way, I have a Ko-Fi link uh, in the description. If you're feeling generous, just uh, that's available for you to do donate a little tip if you want. Uh, I also do commissions for custom music and uh, custom thumbnails. I made some of these lovely thumbnails for regular pet um, and I'm all, I've also been commissioned by Lens of Masters to make some uh, custom music for his uh, Twitch layout and some upcoming projects of his. Uh, so if you want to commission me for something, uh, I'm all yours. I, I think that I have pretty cheap and reasonable prices for all of that matters. Uh, I also do Twitch overlays now and then. Uh, so yeah, this is this is just me kind of plugging myself here at the end. Uh, of course, you can most of you probably have clicked off this video at this point, but I just want to say that uh, I'm really glad that the people who do watch the, my content and this podcast seem to always stick around. So many of you like are always here commenting, and like I don't know what you guys see in this channel. <laughs> But I am so glad that uh, for all it matters, for it counts, like you guys are being entertained by this and are interested in what I have to say. And I'm always interested in reading what you guys have to say. Uh, 
So let me know what you think about everything that we discussed in this episode. Like, let me know uh, if you agree with me or if you disagree with me about the Ishimoto thing.、Um, let me know if you're interested in this. Uh, music preservation project that I'm working on, and if there's anything you want to listen to me talk about, in particular about the soundtrack of the series, feel free to also suggest that. Thank you again for hanging out, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>